What's good? Good morning, teacup gang, or whatever, wherever you are. It's the morning for me right now. Um, first things first, let's go over these stickers on my face, shall we? Okay, so uh, yeah, they're Starface stickers. My skin has been acting up. I have them on my face because they shrink my blemishes uh, like pretty much overnight. Like last night, I wore them. And then I woke up and my blemishes were smaller and now I wash my face and I put some new patches on. So I'm hoping by the time I get off my flight, which is very short, um, my skin will be looking a little bit better. The lighting is going to be in and out because I don't have a camera. I mean, I don't have a light, but welcome to the new series on my YouTube channel which is going to be called Travel with T. Ding dong, okay, I'm so excited to be starting this. Today, we are going to San Francisco and I'm getting in the elevator. And yeah, it's gonna be super exciting. I have never been to San Francisco before, which is crazy because I'm from LA. And um, yeah, I'm super hyped. I will be taking you guys along okay so i got cut off in the elevator there are people in there and i got really nervous so i didn't continue to say what i had to say uh i get a little bit of anxiety with this because it's now me taking my camera out into the world instead of just doing it in my apartment so bear with me please um yeah so we're pulling up we're going to san francisco because for one i haven't been there which is insane for two i have a homeboy out there you guys may know him chef harold uh we work together at bon appetit and he's now living there gonna open up a restaurant soon and i'm just gonna go visit hang out with him um and there's a dope event with ghetto gastro happening as well this weekend so i'm definitely gonna pull up to that they just dropped a new cookbook called uh, black power kitchen and yeah, I'm really excited. It's just gonna be great. Oh, and there's a festival, a Filipino food festival called Undiscovered, which is aligning with my dreams right now because what? I always gonna pull up just to pull up and all these amazing things are happening. So I'm excited to vlog this with y'all and for you guys to come along the journey with me and eat the things. I'm trying to also go to some museums. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to tap into every single thing, but yeah. This is gonna be really just raw and uncut. Clearly, you guys are gonna see a side of me that uh, I'm nervous for you to see, but whatever. Cause like, what is this? This what it is though. This what it's gonna be. All right. See ya. Okay, so one thing about me is I am a window seat girl for life. Part of these videos are going to be voiceover and you know on camera audio i think it's just better this way especially the eating portions are definitely going to be voice over so bear with me okay so we have made it to downtown san francisco i'm super excited to be here i am starving and i need coffee so that is the first thing i'm worried about we're gonna see what the first food venture is and where i'm gonna find some fire coffee this is where i'm staying at downtown there's a pretty nice view i must say i'm really excited to be here right now blessed af grateful af yes is it giving it's giving like um myspace vlog all right so i just want to let you guys know that i've had the itis after my soul food uh and I can't breathe, but I have a dinner reservation at Abaca tonight, so that's where I'm gonna go for dinner. I'm gonna do crazy little light makeup. Giving. Okay. Okay, so I just got to Abaca and the inside of the restaurant is so gorgeous. I wish I recorded more inside, but come along with me. Okay, so I started off with a little bit of complimentary bubbles to look over this well thought out new Filipino American menu. There's a secret menu as well that I didn't get to look at, but I was unsure if this bite came from that secret menu. It was sent to me compliments and it kind of was just to open my palate up before my pork longanisa skewer that was a 10 out of 10 and it came with an egg yolk dipping sauce um i mean if you're not burping garlic is it even longanisa 
Then I ordered the seasick fried rice that came with chicharron, egg, and some pickles. And they sent me over the lengua skewers, which were a 10 out of 10 that had mushrooms, and it was the most tender lengua I've ever had. This here is the Gising Gising. It does not typically come with truffle and scallop, but they sent it to me this way. And this was one of my favorite dishes the whole time. So good. This is my second favorite dish. This was the Okoy fritter. It was herbaceous, it was crispy, there was lots of vinegar, it was just so bomb. Then I got the Branzino that came with an espuma, and that was seasoned perfectly. The Branzino was delicious, it actually was deboned and came with a shrimp mousseline inside. The technique was a 10 out of 10 and absolutely delicious. Look at that, that's what it looked like. It was just succulent and succulent and so good. And then I cleansed my palate with this little bite here before getting into dessert. And I ordered the tupig, which came with figs. It was warm, sticky, perfect, and sourdough ice cream and chocolate. Then I had this cocktail. I also had this cocktail with a kasama rum inside and the ube colada, which was delicious. Yum. What's good, teacup gang? We're out here in the Bay Area with Chef Harold, AKA the food hustler. You may know him as Tito Harold, but this is my Kuya Harold right here. What's up? We are on the way to the Golden State Bridge because I've never been. Never been. Like, what is wrong? <laughs> I can't believe that. Um, and we're going to get into a bunch of other amazing things. If you guys don't know, it is Filipino American History Month, um, Heritage Month. So we're going to be getting into a bunch of dope stuff today and this weekend. So stay tuned and tap in. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. It was super gloomy this day, but I still wanted to come because I've never been and it's a touristy attraction and I was a tourist that day. So we went to this little um, cafe that was right next to it that actually had really good lattes. I got myself a maple walnut latte with oat milk and it was freaking bomb with a chocolate croissant to have and enjoy while we were there. There goes me being cute, enjoying that delicious latte. And when I tell you that chocolate croissant is probably the best chocolate croissant I've ever had, no kids. Getting ready for dinner on Sunday and breakfast on Sunday. E. It's gonna be Liddy. <laughs> Carol decided we were gonna make kare kare for Sunday's supper. Inside our kare kare, what are we gonna put? Some beef stew, beef, beef stew, and then some beef shank. Shank. We're gonna put eggplant in there. Bok choy. Bok choy seed down. This one. This one. Where's the cutter cutter mix, bro? Mamacitas? Nah, if you don't know about this shit, man. Right there. Mamacitas, we're gonna do a video with y'all. Where y'all at, man? Pull up on us. Pull up on us. Anato, do you have that? What? Anato or no? Yeah, yeah, I have it. Okay, so we just pulled up to Chivas, which is a Filipino restaurant. We love a strip mall joint. Um, we're about to see what's good. We're about to see what's good. We've heard all about this place. We've heard that it's amazing and that it's probably the best Filipino food in Delhi City. So come along with us and get a taste of Chibok. We ordered the seafood sinigang and it came with fish, shrimp, and mussels and the broth was seasoned perfectly, perfectly sour, okay? This is some of the best sinigang I've ever had and this was enough for four people and it was very affordable for the portion size. I love lots of veggies in mine and when I tell you 10 out of 10, season with patis always. You know, to be real with you, this is my first this interview. First How did you get the name Uncle Tito? Because that's like the same thing, you know? Because for those of you that don't know, Tito means uncle. Yeah, Uncle Uncle. So it's Uncle Uncle. <laughs> or unless your uncle's name is Tito. So it kind of plays with the Filipino American aspect of it, Uncle Tito. Yeah. So, uh. Oh, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, so, so we're, we try to really make sure that. Like to be known, it's for it's Filipino American. American. Yeah. I love that. I love that because like it's so hard nowadays. I feel like if you just automatically call yourself a Filipino restaurant, and if it doesn't taste exactly like Lola's or Lolo's, like you're automatically like, I mean, oh, it's not Filipino. That's that's the hard part about it. It's like yeah. um, I feel like Filipino food could be biased in some sort. For sure. I mean? Like 
everyone's a double, you know, their Same mom. Their, yeah, for sure, and res respectfully so. Yeah. But um, yeah, we're just trying to bring it to kind of like a light of what we what we are and who we are as you know right. what we grew up. So for the teacup gang watching, if they were to pull up to Uncle Tito's, what is like a staple dish on the menu that they should order? Um, lechon, best lechon in the city. And Period. Soon, Period. Um, I call it the two for one because um, yeah, like we made the skin like you know, chicharron, but then we get a really good like heritage breed pork belly and yeah. stuff like super thick and super yeah. even Fire. Um, so that part is like super juicy and yeah. you know so that our cc cc has a story behind it it's like you know my pop is from pampanga area mm -hmm. um yeah so our cc on the menu i try to emulate i would make like 20 30 batches of cc for my dad yeah, and just be like, yo, it's good. You know, like, really? Yeah, because you're from Pampanga, so I'm just like, you know, like, you know, you know, right. He was a part of the development process. Yeah, for sure. That's and then beautiful. The last one That's we so did. Dope. That's so dope. Yeah, so the one we have on the menu right now, he's like, I just remember his face. Was just like, this is it. Out of all yeah, the so ones. We just kept it the same. Fire. So when you guys pull up, you gotta get the lechon and the seasick. You guys pull up here. Let me switch it up. Uh, where are you from? <gasps> He's interviewing me in my interview. There we go. Where am I from? I'm from LA. Okay. Cool. Born and raised, grew up in the valley. I grew up in Glendale, right next to Eagle Rock. Okay. You cool. know where Eagle Rock is? Mm -hmm. There's a really large population of Filipinos over there too. Um, so I grew up out there. I'm in the valley now. I'm a valley girl. What does Filipino food mean to you? Like you went to Chibog earlier. It was so comforting. Yeah, no. It, it just seems like you're going into like a family park. Yeah, yeah, like it was so comforting. The bowl of synagogue that came out was bigger than um, Harold's and my head combined. It was like this big. The bowl of rice was humongous. The synagogue was actually fire. We got the seafood synagogue and it was actually fire. It was perfectly sour. It was balanced out. It had a bunch of veggies and it was just amazing. Like, you know, and Filipino food to me, I mean, obviously it's like that comforting food that I grew up eating. But now it's like, when it comes to like us, the younger generation of like, Filipino Americans, like we, we're doing it a little differently. Like, I agree. For yeah. me, since you know, I'm only part Filipina. Like, I, I'm also black, so my papa was called Soul Phil, where I do Filipino soul food. And I don't know. I think it's just dope, you know, to meet people like yourself that are just changing. We're changing what Filipino food is. You know what I mean? I feel like yeah. Filipino sure. food is sure. different for everybody. To be honest, like. I haven't been to the PI since I was in fourth grade, type of thing, but yeah. I'm playing off of what me, Pella, and Joe grew up on. Yeah. Like I said before, we grew up on like, on we grew up on like, solo, like straight up, like, you know, yeah. adobo, like the hitters type of thing. Yeah. But whenever we try to branch out now, you know, it's like even regions or whatever we're not comfortable with, like we want to make sure that we do it respectfully, so. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's like, we don't have like try it out, whatever. But you know, we just want to make sure that it has like the right mindset, right story to it too. But that's dope. I mean, it's it's a beautiful thing that you're doing that. You know, like you said, respectfully to the culture instead of labeling it something that it's not. Because you know, if you pull up to Soulfield, you're not getting traditional Filipino food at all. You may get the flavors, you may like understand some of the ingredients, but it's not like. You're pulling up to eat just strictly Filipino food, so Where I get where you're coming from. So it's a pop up right now. Okay. Maybe it'll come pop up here. There you go. Pull yeah. up on you. Bring Soul Phil to the L Bay Area. We pulled up to LA one time. Too. Really? Teacup gang in the comments down below. Let us know if y'all in the Bay Area, and we'd love to see Soul Phil at Uncle Tito's. A little collab, brunch, dinner. What's the vibe? You know, we're ready to go. Ready to Tito, get it. Hello. These were the wings, the OG, Tocino, and Adobo. And this was the Lechon. And this is the best Lechon I've ever had. It was so freaking fire. Crispy, perfect, amazing. This is the merch that um, Vinny was wearing and a bunch of other goodies. Support it. Okay, so we've done some dope things. We've had some amazing food thus far. But now, 
We are on the way to do some Michelin star sh Okay. We're on the way to go eat dinner. I'm taking myself to Saison for dinner and I'm really hype about it. I've heard amazing things. I've been recommended by several people. I'm excited. I'm really grateful to be here and be able to experience these things. I just want to be on the way to fly shit all the time. This type of life I'm manifesting for myself. On the way to do fly every single day. A nice day on it. So we are at Saison and we start out with this beautiful herbal tea that has been foraged from the local Bay Area. And now we're getting into our caviar course, which is caviar and coastal seaweeds that is served with a bubble. The description is gonna be in the corner throughout the service. This is by far the best caviar I've ever had in my entire existence. It's warmed up in kelp, so you can imagine it's umami and savory and salty, and it was really buttery as well with the spinach and the broth that it was served in. 10 out of 10, freaking amazing. Now we're getting into the Ember Jack course. Um, which has been dry aged for three days and it's like a lettuce wrap situation He's shaving some uh, Budahan lemon that's been preserved and pretty much dried over the hearth um, So it's a build build your lettuce wrap situation and there's shiso It comes with the hot sauce that's made from the bones of the fish a jelly and some pickles and some crispy fish skins This was a really fun experience and it was so delicious Then they gave me the uh, color of the amberjack, which was amazing. I finished that in five seconds <laughs> Now we're gonna get into one of my favorite courses, which is the tomato course. This comes with the house-made yogurt and some flatbread. Best tomato of my life. Best tomato of my life. Now we're getting into our fourth and fifth course that is served with a sake. And I had no idea that you're not supposed to serve your own sake out of the bottle. So they have this really interesting contraption here where you kind of just like serve it yourself um, while you have your abalone, which is the best abalone you'll ever have with wood ear mushrooms. Texturally, this is the best, most tender abalone I've ever had. And this uni toast is wow. Like what? The best. Like I have nothing to say about the uni toast, but how do they even do that? Now this is the daikon radish course and that was amazing as well. Sorry, we're going a little fast here. We're getting into the duck course now that was served with a beer and a wine and some pulots and this amazing cherry reduction. We have the sweet component, we have the salty component and it was just absolutely tender and delicious. Then they gave me a radicchio cocktail which was really, really good. And the duck course also comes with a gizzard and heart which was not gamey and delicious and duck sausage that was served in nasturtium leaf. And I washed it down with duck consomme. And now we're getting into our Wagyu course with radicchio and the wine that was paired with this was my favorite wine by far. And now we have the Huckleberry um, Shaved Ice, which is a great palate cleanser before getting into my second dessert with this phenomenal Marsala. Uh, that is an apple and it's served with a sunflower butterscotch and some amazing, amazing ice cream. The perfect way to end the meal when I tell you what and that tea was the perfect way to wash it down. I was so grateful and blessed to just be able to check out the kitchen. Um, I saw the little abalone where they kept it, which was really, really cool. Uh, Swanye kitchen, Swanye food, Swanye service. Obviously, the kitchen is gorgeous. The food that comes out of it is even more gorgeous. And yeah, so they're breaking down, so they're pretty much cleaning, but I imagine it's always sparkly and shiny like this. Then I was actually really grateful enough to kind of just like talk with one of the chefs. He was showing me uh, one of his last pickups and you know how he pretty much prepares it. Uh, they actually use almond wood, I believe, which is also located in the dining room. Um, but yeah, I just want to say everybody was amazing to be around. The service was 100 out of 10. This is the pastry line. Ah, this was so fun. Okay, and this is the amberjack where they dry age the amberjack. And yeah, they keep... Oh, this is the wood that they use. Yes, yes. And this is my last little drinky drink with buckwheat. And when I tell you chef's kiss all the way around. I couldn't believe that I left with some more goodies, which was the best chocolate to eat the next morning. Chef's kiss to Saison. You are literally a love letter. Day three. Day three in San Fran. Got a bag of cheese. Dinner last night was amazing. I dreamt about it and I'm still thinking about it. The service at Saison was 100 out of 10, impeccable. 
Ah, the tomato course, caviar, the uni tones. Oh my God. I could go back there right now. I could go back there and stand outside until they open right now. Anyway, so day three is today. I have a bag of cheese in my hand because there is a Filipino food festival right downstairs where my boy Harold is making a um, adobo patty melt and he ran out of cheese. So we're coming down to bring the cheese as well as look at a bunch of the other vendors that are um, gonna be there. I'm super excited and I'm actually hungry, surprisingly. Surprisingly, because I ate so much last night. But I'm super hyped. We're gonna go check it out. Let's get it. Okay, so I walk right into the greatness. There's all kinds of vendors here. There's food vendors, there's um, fashion, and there's music and beverages. Then I find Harold. What's in the patty melt, G? Adobo, achana, three different types of cheeses. Then we crushed it with two other cheeses, so it's a five cheese patty melt. Five cheese patty melt, baby. Okay, so they built the cheese melts with a nice cheese crust over them and they were working. I got to try the adobo cheese melt and it had a chara, it was crunchy and it was really good and I wanted to go check out the other vendors. So they got Senior Seasick here and then I went to the Lumpia uh, company truck and I got the Veggie Lumpia and I went to the Ube area because I heard they had the best desserts, they sold out so fast. I got the Ube um leche flan cake which was delicious like what i love ube then we went over to grab some spam masubi because i was craving spam and we got the lechon masubi as well and went back to the main stage and looked around at some vendors that sold some earrings and i supported i got a few earrings from different vendors and i picked up this dope sweater <laughs> and then yeah we went to go say what's up to kasama and went to the other stage and there was two different stages and we went to go check out some of the books that they had which were really really cool hopefully i'll be there one day and then yeah that was an amazing festival everybody ended and danced and had a good time good morning this is the clearest day i've seen so far in san fran it's nice and sunny and clear i could see the water over there what Goody. Okay, so as you can tell, I'm a little bit tired. Uh, we are on day four. It is the last full day here in the Bay Area. Yesterday was super fun at the festival. We had a great time. We ended the night at a little after party situation down the street. And now, um, yeah, it's Sunday fun day, AKA brunch day, AKA do dope things like go to the museum and link up with Ghetto Gastro and check out their new cookbook. And yeah, and then I think after that, we're, uh, Harold and I are gonna make dinner. We're probably, yeah, we're making dinner today. We're gonna have a little dinner party. Stay tuned. So we went to Bungalow Kitchen by Michael Mina. I got the clam chowder with the park house roll. We got avocado toast and some latkes with lox. My main course was steak and eggs because that's the type of girl I am. And it was delicious. This is the lobster pot pie that had truffle and amazing veggies in it. It smelled so good when they opened it. Like, oh my God, it was so delicious. Now that I'm still in a food coma from brunch, <laughs> brunch was absolutely delicious. We're on the way to see Ghetto Gastro in our Black Power Kitchen. <laughs> so, we're on the way to the MoMA, right? Yeah. MoMA Museum, that's where they're gonna be hosting the event. So yeah, hopefully I can record a little bit in there. Here. Do I even say it right? Yeah. I did? Oh. Okay, ghetto gastro at the MoMA. This is a proud, proud moment for all of us. They just dropped their new cookbook called Black Power Kitchen. We are waiting for them to speak and just grace us with their presence. They were dropping some gems and I just feel like this is such an important moment for us in the culture and the food industry. I got my book signed and then we headed over to make our Sunday supper. Harold and I, we were making kare kare and that's my veggie prep. Yeah, look at that. Swing gay all day, mise en place, color coordinated. That is the lechon that's been in the oven since that morning, since before brunch. That's the kare kare. 
if you guys need a gotta get it recipe i do have it on my youtube channel and this is the best garlic fried rice i've ever made in my life i made it with the lechon fat and crispy garlic and it was just mwah, 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 chef's kiss and this is the veggies we made i made it with delice and mary brought this amazing shrimp we did air fried lumpia because look at us trying to be cautious right yeah right and we actually air fried the lechon as well and yeah of course we're gonna have our veggies and rice and it was just delicious look at my plate i have my bago on and this was the perfect way to end the trip the sunday supper around beautiful people and spread love and positivity then we had a little bit of affogato and some more dessert wine i mean what 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 foodies do right i thank you guys so much for coming along with me to my san francisco food venture let me know what you guys think down below in the comments and until next time peace love and blessings